Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the most important changes that Microsoft have been working on on Windows 11, build 26120.2415 in the dev channel, and on build 22635.4515 in the beta channel. Also, since I haven't created a video in some time for preview builds of Windows, we're also going to be looking at some of the important changes that Microsoft has been pushing out on previous builds or in another channel, such as build 27754 the Canon channel and even previous build back to the last video I created. Okay, let's dive into the changes available through the Windows Insider program. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will help in the channel and supporting my work. Okay, let's talk about Windows Recall. Starting with Windows 11, build 26120.2415 in the dev channel, Microsoft is finally delivering the first preview of Windows Recall, but it is only available for Copala Plus PCs, which are running on the latest Snapdragon processors from Qualcomm. The feature is expected to roll out to Copala Plus PCs using Intel and AMD processors, but the company isn't sharing an exact date. You can also check the video description that they have a comprehensive guide on more details about Windows Recall. However, in summary, Microsoft is making available an updated version of the feature that addresses many of the security privacy and concerns. So basically this means that Windows 11 now keeps the recall data always encrypted even when you're signed in. However, you will have to authenticate with Windows Hello constantly to access your data using this feature, which it might get a little bit of annoying, but it's going to be more secure. Starting with this update, the AI models to manage Windows Recall, including the new click to do feature, will download automatically on compatible devices through Windows Update. However, the feature will remain disabled until you turn it on by launching the app from the start menu and opting in into the experience. As you can see, the app remains mostly the same as when the company introduced the feature for the first time and then it have to pause the development because of the security concerns. However, the experience now integrates with Windows Hello for security and also when the recall feature detects sensitive information on a screenshot, it will not save that particular snapshot. And you also get a new feature called click to do, which is basically a context menu. This right here, this is click to do. And Microsoft is touting this feature as an experience that gives you additional options to perform different actions. For example, if you select text, from an image, you can copy that text to the clipboard, open the selected text within a specific app, search the web, open a link. As you can see right here, that this snapshot has a clickable hyperlink and you can also send an email. Now, if you select an element for an image, you can copy that element to the clipboard, save the element to another location, or you can share it, or you can even open it with another app or do a visual search. You can also see that we have options to use the Photos app in Paint to blur the background, erase an object, and even remove the background, but in this case, using paint. Now, if we go to the settings app, more specifically to privacy and security, we're going to find the new recall and snapshots page, as you can see right here. And the settings remain also virtually the same as the first preview of recall that we have seen in the past. Maybe there are a few changes cosmetically, but the settings are all the same. You can use this option right here to enable and disable the feature. And in here, you can control the storage. You can change the storage usage that the feature uses to save a snapshot snapshots and you can also set the storage duration for the snapshots. You can also click here and this will just take you to the storage settings for Windows 11. You also have some options to delete screenshots. You also have an option to filter out sensitive information and this option is actually new and you can also filter apps and you can also filter out websites. One important thing that Microsoft pointed out is that you will be able to enable and disable recall through the Windows features page. However, during the early development phase, the operating system will retain the binaries on the hard drive, but in future updates, the system will even remove everything related to recall from the setup if you choose to clear the option right here. Now, if we take this one step further, if we actually open group policy, and then if we go to Windows Components 
and then we open the Windows AI folder, we're going to see that we have a new allow recall to be enabled. So if you enable this option, users will be able to turn on Windows Recall. However, if you choose the disable option, Recall will be completely disabled. All the snapshots will be deleted and all the components for Windows Recall will be removed from the computer. If you choose to disable this policy, you will need to click apply OK and then restart the computer to apply the changes. Now, if you don't have Windows 11 Pro, if you're using Windows 11 Home, you can actually go to the registry and then on H key local machine, software policies, Microsoft Windows, and inside of the Windows AI key and using the D word option, you can create an allow recall enablement. And if you set this to zero, that means that the AI feature will be disabled on your computer. Now, if you turn on Windows Recall on your computer, you're going to have a new icon. If you click that button, you will open this menu right here. And from here, you can pause the feature and you can open the Windows Recall settings and the actual Windows settings app. And that's it. That is a quick look to the Windows Recall feature. And this video is more to show you all the interesting features and changes on Windows more than just showcasing Recall. So we're going to proceed with all our changes. In addition, Microsoft is updating the sign-in screen. So if we lock the computer and then we open the sign-in screen, you're going to see this animation right here and you're going to see this text right here. And this will depend whether you have Windows Hello Face, fingerprint, or you have configured a pen to access your computer, then that's going to change depending on your authentication method. As part of the uh, Windows Hello improvements, Microsoft is also updating the experience when using pass keys. For example, if I select the pass key that I have already configured for this Google account, we're going to get this new prompt that as you saw had a animation and this looks very similar to the animation on the sign-in screen. And from here, you just need to type your pin in this case, and that actually authenticates the account. And that's it for the Windows Hello improvements. Now, if we go to the settings app, and then if we go to privacy and security, we're going to notice that we no longer have the activer history page. And also, if we go to system, we are now going to find a new page for AI components. So basically, if you have a Copala Plus PC and you get new features, all the components regarding AI will be located right here. As part of the uh, preview build for Windows 11 in the beta channel, Microsoft is also introducing the resume feature, which is a mobile and computer integration that allows you to resume working on files from your OneDrive account that you might have started on your iPhone or Android phone. So to enable the feature, you will have to open the settings app and then on apps, you're going to find a new resume entry and that will take you to this page where you can turn the feature on and off. Right now, it only works with OneDrive. In the future, if Microsoft is going to add more apps, that's still unclear. So the idea is that you can start working on a Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and even you can start working on a PDF. And if they're safe on your OneDrive account, and if you're using your same Microsoft account on your phone and on your computer, you will be able to resume what you started on your phone on your computer. And for this to happen, you have to start working on the document on your phone while your computer is locked. Now, if it's been less than five minutes and you open the computer, then you will get a toast notification on the bottom right corner, like any other notification. And you can click that notification and then open that file on the browser using the online version of the Office apps. Now, as part of the uh, changes for File Explorer, the update in the Veta channel introduces some fixes and improved performance issues with the context menu and thumbnails. However, it's also being discovered that there are new features in the works for File Explorer that they're not actually available on this particular update, but you can enable them manually. And one of them is the ability to right click the start backup prompt that appears when browsing files on your computer with File Explorer. And then you will be able to turn off this feature with two different options. 
you can get a reminder in a month or you can turn off the, the reminder completely. Another feature that Microsoft is working on is on the ability to open new instances of File Explorer as a new tab instead of a completely separate instance. So let's say that we look for a file from the start menu. Let's look for just uh, text and I can see this folder right here and then I can just click the open file location and as you can see it opens on a new tab. Now, if you want to control this feature, you have to open this menu and then on options, you're now going to find a new option right here called open desktop folders and external folder links in a new tab. If you want to have the legacy behavior, you can uncheck that option, click apply and click OK. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention when I was talking about past keys is that on the past keys settings page, Microsoft is working on a new advanced options page that I think is related to a in changes that will allow Windows 11 to work with third-party passkey services. And when you go inside of that page, it's going to look something like this. And like I said, this is still under development and it's not available for everyone. Now, from previous builds of Windows 11, one thing that Microsoft is changing is the ability to show a shorter version of the time and date. And to see the feature in action, we need to go to date and time. I'm going to turn this on. And as you can see, now we can choose to show abbreviated time and date on the system tray, as you can see right here. Now, when you turn this option on, you might not see the bell icon if you don't have any notifications and the do not disturb option feature is enabled. Now, from the start menu, when you right click a file, we now get an option to share that particular file directly from this interface. And if we open the if we open the jump menu from an app and you have a recent file, you will also see an option to share that item directly from the menu. Now, if we go to personalization and then we open the text input page, we are going to find an option that allows us to customize the Copilot key on the keyboard. If you have a keyboard that actually includes a Copilot button, and from here you can you can remap that key to open search, or you can actually choose a custom application. In this case, I have these two apps, but but if you happen to have that Copilot key and you install ChatGPT, you will also be able to open that chatbot from OpenAI using the Copilot key on your keyboard. Now, while we're here, we can go to the touch keyboard settings and I'm just going to open the keyboard and I'm just going to show you that now we can use the new gamepad layout that is available on Windows 11. I have it already turned on. However, to select it, you have to open settings and then on keyboard layouts, you're going to find the gamepad layout right here. So basically the new layout maps a specific button such as X, Y, LV, RV, LT, and others to common keys like backspace, space, left, right, and numbers. So, and that's it. That's how the gamepad layout looks on Windows 11. And that's it. Those are the most important changes that you're going to find on the inside of the most recent builds for Windows 11. Let me know in the comments what you think about these changes. Remember to like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.